Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY video here about good old Athena, my somewhat disassembled Warrior 38. In this week's video, I would love to get this new diesel tank installed, and that includes the stainless steel frame that's gonna secure the tank and also support the cabin sole. I think I've figured out what to do about the whole 102 versus 204 generator failure from last week's video, but we'll get back to that later in this video. Last and also least, with the galley pole finally installed, I can go ahead and finish the open side of the nav station here. Let's start with the tank. I've got this 215 liter plastic tank I want to use for diesel and I want to place it roughly here slightly offset to the center of the boat and as you can see it's pretty tall that presents two challenges for one securing the tank and also how am I going to get diesel in and out of it and also how am I going to vent it my reason for placing the tank slightly off center is because of the kitchen island that's going to look roughly something like this my reason for offsetting the tank a little bit towards the port side of the boat is so that we can squeeze past here into the galley and there's a good amount of room there, but also so that there's enough room over here on the starboard side to get into the settee. The fact that the tank is slightly offset is perfectly fine. There's no need to worry about weight distribution and stuff like that. It's only 200 kilos. I know some of you guys are a little bit concerned, but it's gonna be fine. Let's circle back to the challenge of how to get diesel in and out of this tank and how to vent it. This tank is not gonna have an external fill. The only way to get diesel in and out of this is to pump it from one of the other tanks. When it comes to venting the tank, I think I've got two options. The non-lazy version would be to put in a pole like the one here in the galley attached to the kitchen island and vent the tank out through that. Because I'm only going to be transferring diesel relatively slowly in and out of this tank, I think I might be able to get away with just venting this to the stainless steel tank behind the engine, although I am pretty sure that's not best practice. I do have the non-lazy option of putting in a vent through the cabin top, that way the hose for the vent is never going to drop below the top of the tank, which is what you really want. Like any cooking show worth its salt, I've gone ahead and done a little bit of prep work. This is my rough, very rough plan for how I want to build the stainless steel frame that's going to secure the tank and support the cabin sole. I started out the week by grabbing some quick measurements. I then cut some pieces of hefty, hefty 40 by 40 millimeter square tubing. It's three millimeters thick and ridiculously strong. Mr. Plasma Cutter made short work of cutting the flanges out of some six millimeter stainless. Then a quick bit of drilling and some glorious beautification of the flanges. Feast your eyes on these beautiful flanges. Now the square tubing here is only cut roughly to size, so I'm still gonna have to trim this a little bit. Here's what I'm going for. A square piece of tubing here and another one down there. This one goes between the two here and this one goes between the two over here. That leaves me with a fairly big unsupported piece of cabin sole here, but that's okay. On the side of the kitchen island, there's gonna be a little bit of a section built out and that's gonna stiffen this up. So it should all work out. I would love to tag all of this together here inside of the boat, just to minimize the risk of me 102-ing it up. The welding machine, the water cooler and the tank are all heavy and I hate lifting heavy stuff. So I was hoping I could just drill a hole for this speed, depth and temperature transducer. It's gonna go somewhere right around here and then just lead everything up through that hole. The hole should be large enough to pass everything through. So our fingers crossed. I did have to do a little bit of disassembly, but this worked out fairly well. When I first started planning this thing, I was pretty sure it wouldn't fit through the companion way, but it just barely does. Of course, the frame is not really done yet because we still need a way to attach and secure the kitchen island. As well as some way of strapping down the tank. And I figured we would kill two birds with one stone. It's gonna involve welding in place eight little pieces of stainless steel, four on each side. I'm not entirely sure this is the best way to strap in the tank, but it's the best I could come up with. Now, for reasons you'll see later, it's important that those eight little pieces of stainless are higher than the toe kick. 
And they also need to line up with these little indentations here on the corner of the tank. It's not quite a 102 caliber mistake, but my life would certainly have been easier if I'd ordered some flat bar stock instead of all of this angle here. There was a last minute change to how I wanted to build this thing. And uh, well, now I've got six meters of this stuff. It's not the end of the world. It just means I have to try and liberate the six millimeter stainless that's hiding here underneath this uh, somewhat dusty boat. we go the frame is now 99.9% done the very last thing I need to do is just to pacify the wells so they hopefully don't start rusting an alternative would be to get the entire frame dipped like I did with the rudder stock but for the frame this delicious looking liquid should do the trick this is something that's most definitely going to take place outdoors. This is going to be the before shot. I don't really know how long to let this sit, but let's just leave it for 15 minutes and then we'll see what it looks like. It only took about 15 minutes for the welds to beautify. After the acid was done doing its magic, I rinsed the frame with some water and left it outside to just dry a little bit. Next up on my to-do list is to drill the holes to through bolt the frame to the structural members. The frame is now loosely held in place by some 10 millimeter bolts. Of course, to be able to tighten them, I need access to the back of the structural members. A while back, I made a super spiffy little template on our CNC machine for routing out some very precise holes to gain access to the storage underneath here. But of course, that template has since then gone missing. So for now, I'm just gonna create some temporary holes. In between the flanges of the frame and the structural members, I'm gonna use a little bit of the Devil's Cock, AKA 3M's 5200. Because 5200 has such a ridiculously strong bond, there's plenty of scenarios where it's not the right choice. For instance, bedding port lights, that's a great example of when not to use 5200. Something like my frame here, well, I think it's a good choice. The one I've got here is 5200 FC. That's the fast cure version. This is the one you want, unless you've got the patience of a saint. I am pretty sure I'm gonna get that 5200 everywhere, but that's okay. Once this is sealed up, you're not really gonna see it. Okay, let's get the bolts in there before I attempt to do any kind of cleanup. I don't know if the trick with soapy water also works on 5200, but like I said, nobody's ever gonna see this, so it's fine. It's the next day and the frame feels very sturdy. I'm not going to just let the tank sit on these two structural members. I'm gonna add some pieces of bankerai here for the tank to sit on top of. And seeing as I've already got it, I might as well add a little dab of 5200. I considered whether or not to support the ends of the bottom here, but in the end I decided I don't think that's necessary. These boards are pretty dang stiff and I'm sure this is gonna be more than strong enough. And there we go, the tank is in place. I've got some stainless steel turnbuckles. I'm gonna attach four of those to each side of the tank and then to the turnbuckles, I'm gonna attach a little stainless strap. Now in between the stainless strap and the tank, there's gonna go a little rubber strip. I've got everything except for the stupid stainless steel straps. The straps are on their way here. I'm just not entirely sure they're gonna get here by the weekend, but at least now you guys know how I'm planning on strapping the tank down. Just in case you're wondering why there are two holes in each of these doohickeys and why the bottom one is threaded, that's because the bottom one is for securing the kitchen island. In case we ever need to remove the kitchen island, we'll just undo those four bolts and lift the kitchen island and we'll have plenty of access to this tank. Okay. 
I can now boast that I've got an almost completely flat cabin sole. I think tomorrow I'm going to go ahead and see if I can make this step that's going to be down here into the forward cabin. Sure, there are still the access holes I need to deal with, but yeah, I'd like to get this step figured out. While I've got the saw out, why don't I take a stab at the open side of the nav station? I'm picturing something like that, maybe. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I'm probably going to double up the plywood so it doesn't look thin and flimsy, but other than that, I think it looks pretty good. Good morning, guys. It is Saturday morning. No sign of those stainless steel strips, but that's okay. I can still move ahead with the little step over here. Now, yesterday when I was just tidying up and cleaning the boat, I put the mock-up of the kitchen island here in place. I did that so that I could move around it and see if I am satisfied with the size of it, because of course, I want it to be easy to go past it here and also over here into the settee. If I could just have a few more centimeters here to get into the settee, everything would be perfect. Here's the little step I want to work on today. It's no doubt going to be very fiddly, but if I can pull this off, then I'll unlock the completely flat cabin sole achievement. I'm constrained on all four sides here, and to me, that spells template. And for that, I really like this green foam. It's easy to cut, and yet it's rigid enough that you can sort of screw it together and form the template. And that's the first little piece of the template. Hopefully this will give me a nice snug fit. I don't have a single piece of plywood left that's big enough for this, so I'm going to be making it out of two pieces of scrap. Actually, it turns out I do have a single piece of plywood that's large enough. That is very convenient. In the end, I ended up splitting that piece of plywood into two. It's just a lot easier to get this thing out of here when it's two halves. I still need to epoxy all of the supports in place before I can actually step on this, but I think this is going to work out very well. To do that, I'm going to use a little bit of 105 thickened with 406. This is roughly the consistency I'm going for. If it's a little bit off, it doesn't really matter. My personal preference for applying thickened epoxy in gluing applications is to use one of these piping bags. These are typically used by chefs and bakers and stuff like that. As you can see, there's even like a little food icon on there, but they are awesome for thickened epoxy. I leave the screws poking out a little bit. That way it's easier for me to align the support up when I've applied the thickened epoxy. And I'll just put down a nice little bead and screw the thing back in place. Before I leave the thickened epoxy to cure, I'm just gonna clean up the little bit of squeeze out. Tomorrow, when the thickened epoxy has cured, I can come back and prime all of the last pieces of the cabin sole. That'll be a good one to get checked off the to-do list. A quick little side note about the tank, just because I know I'm gonna get comments about it, I am gonna put in a little inspection port so we can actually get into the tank to clean it if that should ever become necessary. It's done with this teeny tiny little hole saw, but I'm gonna hold off on doing that until I've got the kitchen island built. Let's go out into the ever so blinding sunlight and uh, talk a little bit about one of the big upcoming projects. This right here is the deck hull joint. It's where the deck is joined to the hull. The two parts are built separately and then joined together. As you can see, it doesn't look so neat here aboard Athena. The most common solution to covering up this joint is to use either an aluminum profile or a rubber profile. And indeed, Athena did have an aluminum tow rail when I purchased her, but that was badly corroded. And you can get those in different sizes, but a size that looks reasonable for Athena is going to be over 5,000 US dollars. That is way more than I'm prepared to pay for a strip of aluminum. Over the last couple of years, I've considered some different options and they all involve glassing over this joint here. It's a long story, but it has to do with how the hull and the deck are joined together here aboard Athena. 
Suffice it for now to know that it is glassed on the inside, so I don't really need a lot of strength out here, but also there is no kind of adhesive or sealant in between these two, so getting this glassed would be really nice. My first idea was to build something like this, a foam core with fiberglass laid up over it. That would be a very fun project, but it would also be insanely time consuming, and I am very pressed for time. The new, much less labor intensive plan is to bevel this piece of fiberglass here, lay up glass to tie the two pieces together, fair this all in to re-establish this profile here, and then build some little stainless steel stands and attach a piece of wood to it. Something like this. I know it's kind of difficult to picture what it'll look like from just that small sample I showed you, but I found a couple of photos on the interwebs of a guy that did something very similar. And I think he added two boards and ended up painting them, but I think that looks pretty cool. I'll include a link for his blog down in the description. There are some other upsides to this idea besides it being less labor intensive. For one, water will have a very easy time draining from the deck. My little sample here is just a piece of angle iron, so it doesn't really have the right angle here, but I'm picturing something the shape of this roughly, a little bit narrower, and maybe one of those every 50 to 100 centimeters. So it's gonna mean a lot less holes than a traditional aluminum tow rail. I think that Mini Bulwarks is a really good compromise between not wanting to spend five grand on an aluminum tow rail and not having a lot of time because Athena does need to be ready to start cruising in around a year. Here underneath the tub of shame sits my little DIY diesel generator. Last week was a little bit of a bittersweet situation here in the workshop because while the diesel generator does work, which is awesome, it turns out that the engine is a smaller version of the engine I thought it was. And that means we only get four kilowatts worth of electricity. Four kilowatts is a lot of energy, but it's not enough energy to run two of these burners on this induction cooktop and the electric oven at the same time. So what the heck are we gonna do? Well, for now, I think I'm gonna stick with the itty bitty teeny tiny Perkins and just live with the fact that we only have four kilowatts worth of generator power, and then we'll bump up the size of our inverters. The plan is to go with two multi plus 3000 inverter chargers. Now the one I've got here is the 12 volt version. I'm probably gonna go for the 24 instead, but yeah, that is the plan. As many of you pointed out in the comment section on the last video, and by the way, thank you so much for all of the awesome comments. That was incredible. That video got over 1,200 comments, which is just mind boggling and it really helped lift my spirits. But anyways, as many of you pointed out, I do have the option of just swapping out the 102 for a 204. For now, I'll go with the 102 because it's what I've got and also because there are zero 204s for sale over here right now. So yeah, we'll give it a go with the 102 and we'll see if it works out. With two of those multi plus 3000s, we can either choose to run them as one unit or as two separate units. And no matter what we do, if I'm not afraid of doing a little bit of tinkering, then we do have some redundancy there. If one breaks, then we still have the other. So that's pretty nice. Later this summer, I'm hoping I can build an arch for Athena so we can cram as many solar panels on here as we possibly can. We're probably gonna end up somewhere around six or 700 watts if we're lucky. Now that is a drop, maybe not in the ocean, but certainly in a big cup, but every little drop helps. Having looked at the numbers with our little 102, it, it should all work out. So I think I just need to forgive myself for making such a boneheaded mistake. But I do think the phrase don't 102 it up is going to be sticking around for a while. Next week, I hope to get started on the deck hull joint, but the weather forecast is looking a little bit iffy, so we'll see what happens. I've also ordered the plywood I need for the kitchen island, so uh, yeah, maybe that's on the to-do list too. Before ending this video, I want to say thank you again to those of you who left awesome, helpful, kind comments on the video from last week. Also, thank you to those of you who emailed or messaged various suggestions. And of course, the few people that actually donated money, which was just completely out of the blue. So thank you so much, guys. You are awesome. And uh, yeah, that is going to be it for this week's video. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.